Good evening and welcome back to my channel. So uh, something a little bit different today. You'll notice you're way further zoomed out. You can see my uh, my hands way better because uh, I've been taking apart printers lately and uh, ended up with a lot of motors. So these are brushless motors. Bought them from Hobby King. Don't worry about those. But if you look here, I've got so many DC motors from various places, mostly printers. And I figured we should do something with them. I think it'd be fun to have a kind of long-term project. So uh, especially, I think, this guy here. This guy's pretty big. Um, let me get some measurements for you. So uh, let's see. This thing's about uh, 32 mils in width. About mm, 46 mils in height. And I'm just going to zoom you in and we'll take a look how much uh, amperage this thing draws. So this here is my uh, power supply. Got this one from China. And let's see if we can hook this up. Now this is um, this is just an idea of how much uh, current this thing is going to pull because obviously we don't have any load on it. If we had load, then we would be able to tell what's its max current, but uh, I figure if it pulls an amp or two, it should be fine. Okay, so this is, that's the uh, current, one amp. I don't know if you can see that very well. There we go. This is the voltage, 2.85. We're going to crank that up a bit, I think. I think we can go up uh, about 12 volts. I think I'm going to use 12 volt battery because I have... Uh, 12 volt lithium polymer batteries. So let's take a look at this motor here. Ah, 12.33, good enough. All right, go. Okay, so you see we're drawing, now it's on. The red light down here indicates it's on. The green light here indicates it's in constant voltage, so it's reached our desired voltage. So I'm gonna hit okay again. It's pulling 49 milliamps, so, you know, fuck all on a big ship, really. So let me see if I can slow this down with my fingers. Well, I got like 300, 300 or so milliamps there. Almost 400. Okay, so like half an amp. So half an amp at uh, 12 volts would be uh, uh, 6 watts. Yeah, 6 watts is plenty, right? So now the question is, what do we do with this? What do we do with this indeed? Well, I went to the uh, thrift shop this morning and look what I found. Oh, we're going to need to be zoomed out for this. Check this out. Ta-da! Look at this thing. So it's too big for me to put it on screen, but I'm going to put on some photos for you right now. And as you can see, this is a toy boat. Now, this is a toy boat that tickles me in just the right way because it is a toy boat that really does look the part of a toy boat. As you can see here, the hull is flat. This really is not meant to play with. This thing is not meant to be played with anywhere except for maybe in a sandbox, and that just makes me happy. So I want to remote control this. I think this will make a great project. We'll get to try to build our own custom pieces for it and uh, see what we end up with. And the best part about it, it was two bucks. Can't be two bucks. Just the prospect of seeing this thing motoring around the lake using some way overpowered motor and it have no business going that quick. I think that just makes me happy. And you know what? If this motor isn't big enough, we're just going to hook up one of the uh, brushless motors and make it go way faster. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we have to take these two halves apart and uh, lay out what we need on the inside. There's a hatch here, which I like, and I kind of want to hide the electronics in here somewhere, but basically we need to take this apart before we can figure out what we're doing with it. So... Um, these two halves are 
heat staked. I'm not sure if they're heat staked, but they look heat staked. If you look right there, zoom you in there. If you look there, it kind of looks like the uh, green plastic was molded through and then and then melted over so it won't come apart. But I'm going to see if I can work that out. I'm going to zoom back out so you can keep seeing what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to get in there. Well, I do have a solution for that. That solution is power tools. Now, I don't mind if I uh, if I bust through here. I can always seal it back up with silicone or whatever. But for now, we need to get in there. Try not to go through. Uh, Try not to go through if I can. There we go. Oh, that one came through. I might have a fighting chance splitting this apart. Let me do the back. Looks like that one's stuck. I'm trying to flip this up so you guys can see. And it is split apart. All right, so now we've got an empty tub to work with. All right, so this thing is kind of built like it's flat bottomed. It's going to be terrible for steering, but that's okay. I kind of want to make the exterior of this boat look as little like a RC boat as possible. So. Probably going to end up mounting this somewhere in here. Have some sort of shaft coming out here with the um, with the propeller, and then have a rudder with a servo in the back, accessible by the shaft, and uh, some batteries for here. Let's go uh, take a look at my battery stash here. Um, I think these two are 2,200 milliamp hours. something like that. That's good. I can have the electronics sitting up top here. We got a third one. We could run three. This is a bit heavy. But I have so I have enough of these batteries to go around. That's for sure. And uh, again, if this isn't fast enough, we're going to make it faster. Now, as for the top, well, again, I want it to look like a shitty little boat. So, yeah, it's got a hatch here, which is fine. I think I'm going to waterproof the electronics separately so that, um, so that I don't have to waterproof everything like this, and I'll just be able to suck out the water if anything comes in. Um, this will be a nice well for a servo, but, again, I kind of like to keep everything below the water line. So maybe I'll just uh, figure something else out with a push rod coming out the back or something. Hmm. Maybe not below the water line, but at least uh, below regular sight lines. So we can pop this thing out. This shitty kid's toy plastic. Get out. Oh, that broke. Again, not the end of the world. I can always glue this back down. That one's out. That one's probably going to break too. Man, this was not made to be disassembled. I was considering painting this, but uh, the prospect of shittiest toy boat in the world being an actually fast RC boat even though it's going to be super unstable that ah, just makes me happy
Yeah, okay. Looks like we're going to have to cut all these off. That's fine. I was prepared for this. Because we still need to make a hole in here and put uh, some sort of waterproofing container. Now I haven't decided if I should build a uh, speed controller for this with an Arduino or even maybe more primitive than that or if I should just use a uh, commercial one but I don't think I have a brushed speed controller kicking around although they're pretty easy to build could be an opportunity for uh, an Arduino project come on out come on There we go. And now they're separate. There we go. So, I think the plan will be to cut a hole in here and have sort of like a uh, Tupperware sitting in there, like recessed, right? It'll be down, uh, it'll be actually sticking down like this. Something with a tight setting lid. I like these because they clip on but then they'll also have to be sitting far above this. I don't know if I like that very much. But that can hold the radio receiver, the, uh, the electronics, even maybe the servo for steering. I think in the back for steering we're going to have like a big um, rudder of some sort. It's going to be sitting like this and pivot somewhere on the back here, maybe underneath. And then, yeah, I think that'd be great. I'm starting to wonder if this is even enough, but uh, we'll give it a shot. If it's not fast enough, we'll replace it. Cool. So another design decision we're going to have to make on this uh, is whether or not we want the shaft for the prop coming straight out back here, or if we want it to sort of be angled and come out this way. So I grab this pencil here. So either it comes out sort of like this, and then we can web this a little bit to make it keel, or we can have it sticking out straight back this way and have it out here a bit. The only thing is I don't know how how far this is going to sit in the water, but this is actually big. This is about, I don't know, it's about a foot by half a foot this way. So uh, it's probably not going to be sitting low in the water. The water line could be just up here. So maybe having it stick down the bottom would be better. I don't know. What do you think? Leave it in the comment below. So of course one of the first things we need to do is we need to figure out a way to mount this motor. So I was thinking I have some plywood kicking around. I do have some sheet metal too. Not quite sure how exactly I'm going to go about it, but you got to spec it out first. So, again, we have the width, right? So on this, on the the barrel, it's almost. I don't know if that's zeroed. Yep. So on the barrel, it's like 31.6 mil. Thirty-one. Don't know what I was thinking. Thirty-one point six mil. That. Then we have an inner circle, uh, and you'll see this little edge there. So we're going to grab that. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Nine point seven six approximately. Okay, now I'm going to draw it side on, and the shaft coming out of the end, three point two millimeters. So we have to figure out how to make a coupler for this. We have to figure out how to make a uh, prop shaft 
coming outside the boat and we need to figure out kind of get some water safe materials I think you may want to replace this little tiny wire with maybe some thicker wire but I think it's doable I think we can I think we could build something pretty compactly and pretty cheaply to make this work the last thing we need to know is these mounting holes now these are kind of difficult but what you need to do is you need to go just about in the middle of these so they seem to be spaced about 20.8 mils so circle circle from here to here and we can load these up into Inkscape and then try to figure out our geometry. Now, if we don't get it perfect, it's not the end of the world. I mean, look at what we're doing here. It's just uh, pretty much throwing caution to the wind. But um, it'd be nice to know. So now for the shaft, uh, I've put out some uh, paper towel here to show you that I have actually have another hobby, which is RC cars. And these are some parts where I think are relevant to my problem solving here. Now I'm bringing you in as I try to figure this out, right? But hear me out. So here's the, the point, right? We need a shaft leaving the back of the boat with a propeller attached to it. And on the other side, we need a coupler to attach the shaft to the motor. So ideally, this is uh, from RC Cars. This is, a, uh, this is an axle. So basically, this goes through the uh, wheel bearing. Then you have a bolt here and the hex here to put the wheel on. And uh, then there's a cup that accepts the rounded end of this shaft with the two pins. So that would slide into here. Okay? And as you can see I can rotate this. It doesn't matter as long as the shaft is angled to a, um, you know, not past the cup. Um, you can spin this and it's fairly smooth. Okay? Now this is the other end. This is uh, the power transmission end. So basically this goes into here and then the motor spins the diff, this the differential here, and the differential spins the shaft, which spins the wheel. So I'm thinking this could be our shaft. We can cut off the other end here, thread a little bit of it, and actually have this sticking out the back, and then bolt a prop right onto this. And uh, we can use some sort of cup like this. The only thing is, this end here probably won't hook up to the motor. Um, if I can't figure out another way to do it, then we'll, f we'll figure it out. Like you can probably thread this into um, a threaded fitting onto the motor, etc. Don't worry about it. If we get to there, we'll get to there. But I just want to check inside this diff because I don't remember what's holding little spider gears on here. And if it's just right, we might be able to tap this and use it, at, or drill it and tap it and use it to bolt onto our motor. So let's take this apart. Now I brought out the paper towel because this should be full of oil. Um, I can see this thing is soaked so probably not all the oil um, that was in there is leaked out but some of it. So I'm gonna... there we go. So this is just because I can't throw anything away. I have these. Uh, I figured the internals are probably still good, so I'd keep them, but the uh, RC car this came out of is kind of trash, and I would have to spend almost as much money as it's worth to fix it, so I've been waiting to find one used to get parts to fix it, or vice versa, use mine as parts, but so far, not so good. This is from a uh, HSP... Red Cat, Haimoto, they're all kind of the same. Oh, there we go. So it's coming off. This should have really thick diff fluid. But this could have been like the kind of the first one I had, which um, I just used whatever fluid was laying around at the time. Okay, so here we go. That's the inside of a differential. If you didn't know, that's how it works. Pretty cool should make a video about how differentials work. I am an auto mechanic by trade. 
Okay, so clean this off a little bit. So there's a circlip there. I will um, try to pry that off. It's just a, it's an e-clip or whatever, kind of looks like that. I don't know if you can see that. So it's kind of shaped like an E, kind of in this direction. It's magnetic. Okay, pop this off. Okay, so mm, this does not help us much. Um, there's not enough space to drill straight down there because our shaft is 3.2 millimeters across and this is 4 and yeah 3.2 um, no good okay so not the end of the world but not quite what we're looking for I basically need a cup like this end and I need to be able to either jam it jam the shaft into it and put a set screw or sort of bolt it together okay back to the drawing board this here is the uh, housing or half the housing for the diff as you can see it's broken so those two cups would have st stuck out here and here and there's another one of these cups for the center drive shaft so I'm just gonna pry off this e-clip see if we have anything better going on or, or if it's the same size there's the e-clip pull that straight out well it's not coming out Let's see again these are all my uh, destroyed parts so it's not like this thing was ever going back together Oh, interesting. Do you guys see what I see? Give me a second. I just had to find a driver. So this one has a set screw. This could be exactly what we're looking for depending on the thickness of the shaft inside. Also, it will depend if I can actually get it off. The gear just fell off. Interesting. So what exactly is holding that? Let's see. Okay, the bearing is stuck here. Not sure what this set screw does unless it's just the shaft that seized on itself or the shaft that seized inside that bucket hard to say let me mess with this off camera and uh, I'll bring you back when I figure it out well it took a little doing but I got it just this uh, this shaft here was seized in there so this bucket is totally usable I just think that that diameter will be just a bit too big All right, we need to be about 3.2 it's like 2 mils too big now I can probably make up the difference a little bit using uh, maybe uh, heat shrink and CA glue layer heat shrink on top of the the motor and CA glue so it doesn't spin but uh, I think we have a winner now let me show you the rest of my plan so in the end this motor could be sitting here I uh, temporarily secured this on but as you can see it has a hell of a speed wobble this will be here and this will be pushed up against a uh, piece of pipe this end will be cut off and that'll stick down either underneath back here or underneath in the middle here somewhere and this will be threaded and we'll put a propeller on there so that's the plan 
Now I may change my mind um, if this becomes too complex or whatever, but uh, I think this will work. We'll have to uh, follow along with the build if you want to see. So if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. If you don't, well, let me know in the comments below. I think we're going to have some fun doing this and uh, hope you come along for the ride. Thanks for watching. See you next time.